Think about this, if the woman in the non-monogamous relationship gets pregnant by another person who is not her boyfriend slash husband, the boyfriend or husband may have to pay for that child even though it is not his. <coughs> well, that's not even really the point. The point is loving the child and having I the mean, family unit together. Unless they take a DNA test or take the proper steps to find out if it's theirs or not. I mean, well, he does kind of raise a somewhat related point to, as to why... and. I, I'll just touch on this and we'll continue on with the non-monogamy thing, but why, let's say, female promiscuity is more looked down upon than male promiscuity. Let's say, for example, you're a man and you have 10 wives. You know in each instance, and assuming everybody's loyal to, well, the 10 women are loyal to the husband, you know that if, if those 10 women have children, they're all the one guy's kid. However, if one woman has 10 husbands, you can't determine who the father is, historically speaking, yes. Now we have, uh, we have paternity tests, we can establish who the father is. However, that doesn't undo hundreds of thousands of years of evolution and just culture and society where if you know men have a built in, we, we want to be able to guarantee paternity. That's a real fear that men have that women can never experience, a paternity uncertainty. So that's why female promiscuity from, men, men have a stronger uh, the, revulsion, uh, like instinct to promiscuity. The greater crisis here is that we've created a society that teaches us that we can have casual, sex and that we don't need to be committed to one each other to one another and if, when in reality men and women were created for each other obviously i'm christian i believe that god created each of us for each other and that the um, union that god had in mind for men and women was one was each of them coming together as husband and wife and as he shared it's not just good for the person, it's good for society, it's good for the child. Society benefits oh. from Alvinson marriages. Alvinson donated $100. Stay safe. Just because divorce rates are lower does not equate to successful relationships. Divorce is lower because marriage is lower. It's also cheaper to not get a divorce. Divorce can be expensive. Stay coping. Oh, okay. okay. You're, you're probably okay. So, marriage rates have been going down for 50 years since the 1970s, as have divorce rates. So, um, yeah, if you look at the declining divorce rates and declining marriage rates, divorce rates are actually going down faster than the, than the declining marriage rates. But no doubt, the fewer people that get married, the fewer people get divorced because there's fewer people that even have the option to get divorced. Um, I'm I'm talking about the fact that. If, if I can spout off all of the divorce stats again, everyone's been taught 50% divorce rate. It's actually like 45%. That number is stat padded by people who get divorced two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. If you're a person that's never been married, marrying another person that's never been married, your national average divorce rate is around 35%. Um, but it's different for various socio or racial economic groups. Um, it's, it's, like I said, it's not as bad. You can still say it's too high. It is too high. So for my group, my, for my demographic, it's 13% of first time married individuals getting divorced. I've got a white wife, I'm a white man, 13% is what it is. Still too high. I think everyone should, you know, we need to, I would, I would make a lot of changes about no, no fault divorce, things like that. I want people to vet their partners more seriously before they get married in the first place to help prevent some of these problems from manifesting at all. But uh, my point with the divorce stats and divorce rates is that it's not as bad as you've been conditioned to think it is. My point is I think there's a certain degree in our society of anti-marriage and anti-family propaganda compelling young men to just opt out of, of, the, of the marriage dating pool and of the child rearing pool. That's what I think. Here, we'll, we'll talk- women suffer from that. Okay. Matt, I'm going to try your gum. Also, I agree that the collapse of the family, especially the loss of paternal leadership, mm -hmm. has led to decline in discipline of young men as well as poor role modeling for young ladies. Uh, absolutely. Thought. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like I said a moment ago, um, one fourth of children right now in the U.S. don't have a dad in the house. If you look at all crime across all aspects of crime, this is assault, this is violent crime, this is robbery, petty crime, this is all sorts of uh, sexual crime. There's one common denominator amongst almost every single criminal. They come from a single parent household. It is very, very bad for kids to come from a broken family. 
So if, like I said, if I could snap my fingers and fix one problem in our society, it would be to fix the, fix the traditional household. Why is it bad though? Just to come from a single parent. I come from a single parent home. And so do I. I, I don't think. Three, I do too. Three independent uh, daughters that are doing perfectly. I, 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 I don't think. <laughs> my, my mom is what, a single I don't mom. think what Matt is, I don't, Matt is not saying you are destined to turn out bad if you did grow up in a single parent household. However, the, the likelihood, it's better to grow up in a two parent household. If you're a fetus inside of a pregnant woman's stomach right now, mm -hmm. you should be hoping I've got a mom and a dad, not just a mom and no dad. I mean, as a fetus, do you even know what a mom and dad are? Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> here we go. Here they'll, we go. They'll find out. What is a hypothetical? Children do better in mom and dad households where they have not just the, the example mm -hmm and the love from the mom, but also the example and the love from the dad. And also children not only benefit from receiving love from their mom and their dad, but also witnessing the love of their parents that they have to each other. It proves for more successful, more well-rounded children. Um, and That so. doesn't mean that you can't come from a single parent household and still be like a thriving person and a contributing member to society and overcome like the, that's, those that's statistics, a, but I think he's just saying statistically, like in general, that's what it shows. It's harder. It's yeah, harder. It's for, yeah. Difficult. Coming from personal experience, I grew up in a two parent household and yeah, my parents were together the whole entire time. And unfortunately my mom passed away when I was 11 and oh, basically, shit. I didn't know that. I feel like I told you that. Sorry to hear that. It's okay. And basically it was just like my dad for, I'm 18 now. So for seven, eight yeah. years, like it's been just my dad and I will say coming from personal experience, I did feel a lot safer when I was, when I had two parents and like I felt more, I don't know, I guess comfortable, oh, like financially, oh, like, and yeah, just things like that, I would say. No, yeah, no, it's, it's much but more challenging. Yeah, you're not going to turn yeah, My, my parents, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, my parents got divorced when I was in the second grade. Um, yeah. My brother is four years younger than me. He grew up with not, never having a dad in the house, and I ha didn't have a dad in the house from a very young age. It's much more challenging. I've, I've done well. I've, I'm the exception. I've thrived, but um, like, it's, it's a very hard situation to be in for kids. It's very, very bad. It's a very bad situation. We cannot tolerate hand-waving broken households in this society. We, our, our society is too down bad right now. Things are going too poorly to hand wave fucked up households. Yeah, like, we, need, we need good families. It's important to have like a positive role model for people, like a male and female role model in their lives. And to like see, see that interaction, because that's how you learn to love and interact with people when you're older. <laughs> All right, we have Mr. Meatball here um, pulling this one back up. What's the longest relationship? $100. 